supplements contained in this presentation have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The products discussed are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent any disease. who are in the U.S. and good day to the rest of the world. Today is Monday in the U.S. and Tuesday here in Manila. And every Monday we have this doctor's call. For today, we have no other than uh, Dr. Mario who would be discussing on the nutrition to prevent and repair age-related DNA damage. Dr. Mario is an orthopedic uh, surgeon at the Philippine Orthopedic Center. He finished top of the class at the University of the Philippines. He also heads Dengue and Dietary Nucleotide Study and also the Clinical Study Dietary Nucleotide in Children with Neurodevelopmental Disorders and Autism. Now, currently he's a member of the International Society of Nutrigenetics and Nutrigenomics. Okay, so without further ado, I'd like to pass this down to Dr. Mario. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, everybody, for being uh, online. Um, this is one of my advocacy right now, aging. And I've been a member of the International Society of Nutrigenomics and Nutrigenetics and have been extensively researching on aging and age-related uh, DNA damages. So uh, for the past six months, this has been information that I have had collated so I'm willing to share these things with you. I'll try to be as less technical as possible and as simply a simplified uh, presentation as possible. And um, every time I do a presentation, I want to start promptly. So for you guys who have not signed in uh, early, your loss, not mine. So before anything else, I always want to start with a video. While many search for the proverbial fountain of youth, you might be wondering, why do we age in the first place? What is it about our bodies or cells, biologically, that causes us to grow old? There's a variety of internal and external factors such as diet, exercise, or environmental stress which all contribute to cell damage and repair and affect the rate of aging. But the surprising truth is that, apart from these, we actually have a biological clock buried within our genetic makeup. And this clock can only run for so long. In other words, we're programmed to die. Your body is made up of trillions of cells which are constantly going through cell division. And every time they divide, they make a copy of their DNA as well. This DNA is tightly packed into structures called chromosomes, of which humans have 23 pairs. The problem is, DNA replication isn't quite perfect and skips over the end of each chromosome. To protect against important DNA information being cut out, we have something called telomeres on the end of chromosomes, which are essentially meaningless repeats of DNA that we can afford to lose. But every time our cells divide, these telomeres become shorter and shorter until eventually they've been entirely stripped away, at which point the cell no longer divides. Some flatworms are able to endlessly regenerate their telomeres, making them effectively biologically immortal. But their lifespans do vary and they're still susceptible to disease, further suggesting that aging is a mix of genetic and environmental factors. But why don't our cells do this? Ultimately, this replication limit actually helps to prevent cancer, which is the uncontrollable growth of cells and evasion of cell death. The point at which a cell stops replicating is known as cellular senescence. In humans, this replication limit is around 50 times. Once it's reached, the cell gradually begins to lose its function and die, causing age-related characteristics. This also helps to explain why life expectancy is a strongly heritable trait from your parents, because you got your initial telomere length from them. All right, explaining about the uh, replication limit a little bit more later. So the summary of the video you have said, we have just uh, watched, is that uh, our cells contain the complete DNA recipe for a human being. So with one human being, we have the complete genome. And most of this information, DNA is found in the cell's nucleus, although some is found in the mitochondria eventually a lot of the information is stored in the most important area which is your cell nucleus and um, there are environmental factors reactive molecules like uv exposure pollution it accumulates as we age all these environmental factors accumulates as we age and causes dna damage 
And when there is DNA damage, we know there is aging. So our cells are actually very good uh, DNA repairers. They can repair your DNA, but too much damage can be just too much. With a lot of damage occurring on a regular hourly and daily basis, mutations can occur, they should disappear, disease will happen and we age. And the replication or the apparatus to repair is slows down the reparative process, slows down, slow down, slow down until it stops. So aging, therefore, is life's timekeeper. We are all programmed to die. The only thing we have to do and we have to um, are things that we aim to do is that we slow the aging process. You cannot stop the aging process. And uh, I will show you later on some things that could, uh, some organisms that could, that are biologically immortal. So let us first talk about what are the hallmarks of uh, aging. This has been one of the things that I have researched upon. Let me share with you what I found in terms of the hallmarks of aging. So... This is, has been published in one of the journals of some cell biology, the hallmarks of aging, and uh, information regarding aging has been attributed these 10 hallmarks. Telomere attrition, epigenetic alterations, mitochondrial dysfunction, uh, loss of proteostasis, their regulation, the regulated nutrient sensing, stem cell exhaustion, altered intercommunication, cellular senescence, genomic instability, and telomere attrition. And we will be discussing each hallmark briefly and try to make it as simple as possible. So the schemes of uh, the nine hallmarks described in the genomic, in the hallmarks of aging, number one is genomic instability, meaning there, you have an unstable DNA. An unstable DNA means an unstable gene. An unstable gene means an unstable cell. An unstable cell means an unstable organ. An unstable organ means that you basically you're an unstable organism. And any genomic instability compounds. That means that Every day, you are getting more and more and more instability in your gene. And this causes age-related diseases, such as all the age-related conditions. So the second hallmark of aging is telomere attrition, meaning the shortening of the telomeres. And uh, once the telomeres shorten, the ability of the cell to duplicate stops. When the cell's ability to duplicate stops, your organs or the cells of your organs basically age. So the other one is the loss of telomerase activity, which is associated with aging. So aging could be because of two things in terms of telomere attrition, shortening of the telomeres because of replication the cell needs to replicate, 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 because the things that you have to understand is that for the body to be able to repair and regenerate its organs, it has to replicate. So shortening, the more damage there are, so the more telomere shortening there will be. And as we age, the ability of the telomerase activity becomes shorter, shorter, less and less and less. Now, you can see that the shortening and the telomerase is actually one of the most extensively or researched right now in terms of aging. There are also one of the hallmarks of aging is an uh, epigenetic alteration, which means that the mutation uh, that changes the DNA sequence, and this mutation can result from DNA copying error during the cell division, exposure to ionizing radiation, exposure to chemicals like mutagens, infections by viruses can all cause 
epigenetic alterations. Epigenetic alterations can therefore be one of the things that can alter your age. So another thing, one of the other hallmarks of aging is the loss of proteostasis. Uh, let me explain um, a little what proteostasis is. Proteostasis is the failure of the protein building machinery of the cell. Meaning there are a lot of, um, during the central dogma of biology from DNA, information is sent to the RNA. From the RNA, amino acids are recruited. And from the amino acids, protein is built. And then it is folded. And one of the things that is happening with the uh, loss of proteostasis is that protein is unfolding. So there's a miss folding of the protein that has been causing what we call an age-related disease. Now, the other hallmark of aging is a deregulated nutrient sensing. What does this mean? This means that the organism uh, depends on multiple nutrient sensing pathways because one of the things you have to understand is the body, for our body to function well, they have to have a sensing pathway, meaning that they have to know what is lacking in the body, what we need in the body, what nutrients do we need to get, what are the things that are essentially important for us to put in our body a little, too little is, is bad, and too much is also bad. So there must be a sensing pathway that regulates the ability of the body to absorb nutrient. However, in aging, there is deregulation of the nutrient sensing because one of the things it does, it does, it does not give you the right uh, nutrients and it absorbs the wrong nutrients, absorbs it to the point that you don't need it and you just excrete it. Now, the other, uh, one of the things that I have been studying quite extensively on is the mitochondrial dysfunction, which occurs when the mitochondria doesn't work as well as they should because of certain conditions. What will happen is that it could lead to further disease processes and conditions that affect the health of the individual. So what the symptom of mitochondrial dysfunction include? Number one, you have poor growth. So any weight loss, loss of um, muscular growth, um, loss of muscular condition, coordination, muscular weakness are one of disorders, mitochondrial disorder symptoms. Neurological uh, problems such as seizures, um, problems involving mental health, mental alertness, autism, spectral disorders could also be a symptom of mitochondrial dysfunction, visual or hearing problems, and developmental delays, especially learning disabilities. Heart, liver, and kidney diseases are also one of the things that could point to a mitochondrial dysfunction. Gastrointestinal disorders, such as severe constipation, lactose intolerance, some um, severe intolerances, diabetes, respiratory problems, increased risk of infections, poor immune system, thyroid, adrenal function or hormonal dysfunction, dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system, um, neuropsychological changes like dementia, confusion, disorientation and memory loss, are all symptoms of mitochondrial dysfunction. So therefore, one of the things that happens particularly in aging is that the mitochondria does not work well. And once the mitochondria doesn't work well, it stops functioning to the point that it does not do its proper work in providing the energy that the body needs. The mitochondria, remember, is the energy source or the energy supplier of the body. So the other hallmark of uh, aging is cellular senescence, meaning condition in which the cell no longer has the ability to proliferate, meaning that the cell stops dividing. 
So it undergoes what we call senescence, which is stopping your body's ability to reproduce. And when that happens, the cell age, your organ age, and you age prematurely. The other hallmark of uh, aging is stem cell exhaustion. You know, the body calls for the stem cell to produce new cells. So stem cells are poly, they can divide, they can become any kind of cell in the body. One of the things that is problematic with the stem cell is that once you get a lot of damages, stem cells should divide, 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 and promote, provide nutrients or provide new cells that the body needs. So if there are a lot of damages occurring every day regularly and you're not keeping good health for your body, the stem cells will be exhausted. Excessive proliferation causes the loss of cell cycle regulation resulting in acceleration of exhaustion of the stem cell food. So when the stem cells are exhausted, cellular senescence can occur. So the other uh, hallmark is the altered intercellular communication. So in this condition, the cells are unable to communicate properly. So what is happening is that the cells do not tell the nearby cells the right information. And when they get the wrong information, things will go awry. And when with the wrong information because of the poor or altered intercellular communication, this happens more particularly in your brain and nervous system. And this could happen and cause um, one of the things that is problematic in aging, which is dementia, senile dementia, loss of memory, memory loss due to aging. So basically the primary hallmarks or the causes of damage are the genomic instability, telomere attrition, epigenetic alteration, and loss of proteases. This is primary, meaning occurring on the cellular level, while the antagonistic hallmarks, the ones that respond Response to damage are the deregulated nutrient sensing, mitochondrial function, cellular senescence, and the integrative or phenotypic hallmark culprits are the stem cell exhaustion and the altered intercellular communication. Now, what do we do? There are uh, some things that needs to be done. There are like, for example, stem cell-based therapies anti-inflammatories, uh, blood-borne juvenile factors, which are, again, uh, we being used like stem cell injections, elimination of the damaged cell, telomerase reactivation. We Once we reactivate the telomerase, we delay the aging process, epigenetic drugs and supplements and other factors, um, activation of chaperones or protease symptoms, which helps with um, strengthen your uh, proteins, some activators or inhibitors that inhibits mutation, uh, mitohormones, and the cleansing or removal of senescent or dead cells. So these are the therapeutic regimens that are being studied right now in terms of how to delay the hallmarks of aging. So with this slide, you can see that there are sporadic changes that early on when you are young and the cellular senescence, which could lead to cellular senescence. Now, the damaged cells could be blocked. And once the damaged cells are blocked, when you're still young, it has an anti-cancer effect and anti-aging effect, leading to a good tissue homeostasis, meaning um, it prevents you from getting older and removes all the, the things that are causing damages in the cell. But as we age, the damage accumulates, the reparative process or the repair process decreases. There is decreased clearance of the senescent cells. There are decreased cellular renewal and an early cellular senescence causing damages 
And um, if the cellular senescence is blocked, it has an anti-cancer effect. But if the tissue function is decreased, there is increased inflammation, the effects on adjacent cells, stem cells exhaustion. These are conditions that would increase the possibility of you aging. So it has pre-aging conditions. Now we talked about the 50 divisions and this is called the Hayflick, uh, the Hayflick's limit. It's a molecular clock that all of us at our body has and was discovered and proposed in 1961 by Leonard Hayflick, he said that a cell can only multiply a limited number of times. There are actually three phases of cell growth, rapid cell growth, cell division slows, then the cell stops dividing, which is called the senescence phase or the cell death phase. In human cells, human cells stop dividing after 50 divisions, meaning if one cell gets damaged, it has to be replaced by new cells. So one cell will divide into two cells. So that's one division. The two cells will divide into four cells. That's another division and so on and so forth. And current studies with nutrition shows that there are physical activities. There are two promising strategies in terms of trying to maintain the telomere activity, physical activity, as well as nutrition. And uh, let me show you this actually tells you things that could increase your telomere length. Number one, physical activity. They have shown that the physical activity compared to sedentary lifestyle increases the length of your telomeres. Get up everyone and run, run, do your exercise, you know, get up and don't be a couch potatoes. Now, macronutrients like uh, the right nutrients for the bodies, proteins, amino acids, as well as um, the right macronutrients that you need to put in your body, micronutrients, we will be discussing that a little bit later on. But food, sugary and uh, processed food are the ones that could decrease your telomere activity by increasing inflammation and oxidative stress. There's a journal from the PubMed that says, nutrition can help DNA repair in cases of aging. And uh, this is one of the articles that I've been written, nutrients just like 2020. And uh, they concluded that the micronutrients like this selenium, vitamin E, vitamin C are important part in the antioxidant defense mechanism. The oxidative metabolism leads to the production of reactive o uh, oxygen species, the ROS, which can cause further oxidation, um, particularly in the cell membrane and oxidizes nucleic acid DNA furthermore. So, now, let, let's talk briefly about the micronutrients, like selenium is an uh, ROS, a reactive oxygen species scavenger. It means uh, mops up and cleans and removes the oxidative damages. And zinc is another antioxidant. It helps with DNA repair. It is, zinc is involved in apoptosis, cellular proliferation, protection against free radical and DNA repair pathways. So zinc supplementation in the elderly have been shown to limit the DNA damage. Now, vitamin E is another ROS scavenger and uh, like selenium, vitamin E specifically targets lipid oxidation because it's a fat soluble vitamin and prevent oxidized fats from damaging your DNA. Vitamin C is the classic antioxidant and one of the most powerful antioxidant that has been shown to enhance genomic stability. So you take a lot of these products, these micronutrients, and it will tell you and help your body in preventing damages that occurs in the body. Now, what can we do? How can nutrition help with DNA damage? Number one, to make, replicate, 
repair DNA our body requires, again, the building blocks. And so one of the things that we have to do is try to keep our DNA in shape by, but we have, we pay little attention on the things that we are doing right now. And particularly for the food that we are eating or putting inside of the body. So the obvious things that you have to do is don't be protein deficient. It requires DNA repair protein. And proteins require amino acids, which are the building block. And sometimes you're not getting enough. Sometimes you're getting too much. So you have to ensure that there is ample supply of nucleotides that manufactures the amino acids, which then manufactures the proteins, which is the central dogma of biology. The other obvious thing you have to do is do not overeat because a bestie is associated with inflammation and oxidative stress. Both can cause DNA damage. Both can cause premature. Now, here are the things that uh, we talk about because one of the things that is important is not only talk about cellular health, but also mitochondrial health. Now, we will talk about DNA health a little bit later on, but the things you have to understand that the caloric restriction and um, physical activity encourages mitogenesis or production of new mitochondrial nutrient sensing and um, reduction of uh, Oxidants, which is one of the function of uh, mitochondrial activity, promotes also mitochondrial health, stimulates stem cell function, decreases senescence and decreases inflammation, and the reduction of the physical activity and hormonal deregulation can cause aging, which also can cause aging of the mitochondrial health, which can cause a loss of stem cell function, senescence, inflammation, which further becomes a vicious cycle, decrease mitochondrial health, increase aging, increase aging, decreases mitochondrial health, so it becomes a vicious cycle. So the things you have to understand is that with aging, it's a balance, a balance between uh, the antioxidants that we are putting in our body and the oxidative stress that is causing our body to age. So there are things that you have to understand and the Micronutrients that I, I talk about can increase the antioxidant defense, increase longevity, increase health, while oxidative stress increases age-related disease, inflammation, abnormal cell death, and premature aging. So let's talk about the macronutrients, particularly the nucleotide supplementation. Perhaps one of the most important, although lesser known benefits of taking nucleotide supplementation is that nucleotides can slow down the aging process and extend life. This is according to one of the nucleotide, the first nucleotide researcher, um, Western researcher, I might say, on rejuvenation, Dr. Benjamin Frank, who is both a physician and biochemical uh, scientist. In our modern diet, he said there are increasingly lacking of nucleotide-rich food there are because of the increased incidence of processed food, which does not contain nucleotide. Dr. Frank thought that nucleotide achieved their rejuvenating and lifelong uh, action by helping the cells maintain their energy. Remember, one of the nucleotides that is actually important is adenosine, which is Adenine, which is the precursor for adenosine, which is the one responsible for providing adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy of the body. Adenine, adenosine triphosphate, more energy. According to Dr. Frank, the importance of the nucleotides are not only for the building blocks of the DNA and RNA, but also formation of ATP the unit energy of all cellular reactions and metabolism. So you need more ATP. The more ATP, the more the possibility of repair. And another of the early pioneers in delay aging is a medical doctor, Max Odens, who performed experiment on injecting rats with DNA and RNA. And re he reported that the remarkable feat 
of doubling the lifespan of rats as he injected the nucleic acids compared to those who are not injected with nucleic acid. The role of dietary nucleotides in increasing again phosphatidylcholine, which is a precursor, a neurotransmitter precursor acetylcholine in the brain helps with the delaying or slowing down of cognitive aging. So acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter, plays a pivotal role in memory, alertness, and motivation. So dietary nucleotide increases acetylcholine, increases memory, alertness, and motivation of the brain. In addition, the supplemental nucleotides protect your body against damages from free radicals and reactive oxygen species, ROS since many of the effects of aging is because of the free radicals and oxidative damage due to free radical and reactive oxygen species, which damages our DNA, proteins, lipids, and cells. The increasing the body's pool of antioxidant delays the aging process. So we talked about the metabolic theory of aging. Caloric restriction, again, is important and increases lifespan because one of the things you have to understand, and I will explain it later on, is that the more calories you have in the body, the more stress your body, increased metabolic activity, the more metabolic activity, the faster you age. So by reducing the metabolic activity of your body, you increase the lifespan. So caloric restriction exercise, laughing, and nucleotide supplementation, which is the latest study right now. Now, a few things. Eating increases the reactive oxygen species, so which increases the aging process. So fast, if you go to fast, when you fast, it will help you live longer. Again, avoid eating too much. And I recommend uh, fasting and a lot of clinical studies and uh, a lot of researchers always say that by reducing the metabolic demand, the metabolism, the respiration, um, because of the food that we are eating, then you live longer. Reactive oxygen species, therefore, is generated during respiration and metabolism. So if you eat a lot, reactive oxygen species, there is an increase in the respiration and metabolism. And once the metabolism and respiration is increased in the reactive oxygen, when oxygen species is increased, then you undergo early senescence or early aging. The other thing you have to understand is that you have to avoid canned food because it contains reactive nitrogen species which is also responsible for accelerating aging. The reactive oxygen species and the reactive nitrogen species triggers apoptosis or early cell death. And one of the things, a uh, hormone that's observed, uh, it's called the hormones observation. Lifespan is inversely proportional to the metabolic rate by extrapolation respiration, meaning Lifespan is inversely proportional to your rate of metabolism and respiration. The slower your metabolic rate and respiration, the longer your lifespan is going to be. It makes sense, right? A car running at uh, 100 miles an hour would, for 24 hours, like the Le Mans 24-hour race, would break down faster than a car that runs 30 miles an hour, a few hours a day, a few minutes a day, that would increase the lifespan of the car compared to one that is in hyperdrive. And the best example is that the brighter the candle, the faster it burns, right? Think yourself as a candle. If you are too bright, the candle is too bright, the faster it burns, the faster it runs down. Thank you very much. I hope I have elucidated and uh, informed of you learned some things uh, with regards to uh, aging.